news that is. I'm Tim Witzman, president of the Wichita Independent Business Association. We've got a fun one today. Uh, with me for the first time, we have two people. We have Ted and Betty Valanis from Pioneer Balloon. And um, I don't do intros, so we're going to start out by tell us about the two of you. Give, give me some background, tell how you met. You want to start? Sure. Um, <laughs> okay. We'll get his first, was, and then we'll get yours. That's right. I was born and brought up in Massachusetts, north of Boston. Uh, went to school in uh, New Haven, Connecticut. What, sorry, where, where north of Boston? Uh, Haverhill, Massachusetts. Okay. Graduate. Stayed in Salem this <clears throat> past summer. Uh, oh, that's very close by. We used to play them in the sports. Right. <laughs> uh, but graduate of Haverhill High School, uh, then went to college in uh, New Haven, uh, and uh, uh, actually, I met Betty uh, because uh, uh, her best friend was uh, dating one of my roommates at school. Ah. So, and were you uh, a New England girl too? No, no, I'm everything else. No, I was going to say actually, I, I we moved around a lot until I was oh 11 or so, and then we lived in Philadelphia. And Ted likes to tell people he rescued me from Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I liked it. It's still it's still a wonderful town and. Actually, Ted, what he said was accurate, um, but what he didn't tell you was a blind date. And oh. it was a blind date that neither one of us really wanted. <laughs> and it was contingent upon him getting um, a date, what well, he said, he had the car. Ah. So he had the car, so they said, okay, then that's good, <laughs> they, because they we'll were driving from New Haven <laughs> to Philadelphia. And so, it, but it, it turned out that I had a date and he had a contingent date and then neither one worked and so it was a blind date we met each other. Okay. Never dated anybody else afterwards. Where did you, what did business lines were you in originally? Where, where did you begin? Uh, when I graduated from school, I joined General Mills. Okay. Uh, and I spent 14 years uh, with General Mills and a wide variety of assignments in a lot of different places, starting in Buffalo, New York and moving on to Minneapolis, Minnesota, then Kansas City, Missouri, Amarillo, Texas, uh, St. Charles, Illinois, West Chicago, Illinois. My goodness. Mm -hmm. This was in, within what, 14 years? 14 years, that's correct. I wow. used to say that once I got the draperies, I made the draperies in the house. Once I got the draperies hemmed, then it was time to go. Hey, I understand, my dad was a basketball coach. I went to seven grade schools, so oh, very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, have we gotten to the point where you came upon Pioneer or not? Oh, no, not yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, in 1971, uh, I decided that uh, I really wanted to try something different other than the big corporation. Uh, and uh, George Ablock convinced us to uh, move to uh, Wichita. Really? That's and join, yeah. join George at uh, Swiss Chalet Foods. Mm -hmm. So that's and what actually, brought us actually, here. that's what, when we started working together, was actually at Swiss Chalet. Uh, because Ted needed a little extra help, and I was bored at home, and so uh, I did. And our three sons were all from school, school mm -hmm. at that time, so we um, started working together at that time. Okay, now take me from George to Pioneer. Oh, there's a lot of uh, history there, but uh, Swiss Chalet was sold in very late 1973. Uh, we started our own company on April Fool's Day. 1974, which is still the genesis of this corporation. Uh, and uh, we went into the frozen food business uh, and uh, we developed a product uh, called rice fries, which were French fries made out of rice. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very uh, excellent product. Uh, we went out on a private placement uh, of stock in order to get enough money to take it national and uh, that collapsed at the last minute. and. Uh, uh, we sold under tremendous pressure at a significant loss. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're unemployed. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, we had the opportunity to uh, go into the balloon business. And why not go into balloons from manufacturing food products? But of course. Was there a shell of a company there, or were you starting from scratch? Uh, there was a, the, the heritage of Pioneer goes back to 1917. And it grew up as... Uh, a Pioneer Rubber Company, mm. which produced both balloons and uh, medical gloves, surgical gloves and exam gloves. In 1970, the company was acquired by Sherwood Medical Products, uh, of course, primarily for uh, the uh, medical gloves. 
uh, and they tried to run the balloon business like they were running the uh, uh, medical products. And that obviously didn't work. So in 1979, they decided to spin off the balloon business. So what we acquired was not a going company. What we acquired was a manufacturing plant and a customer list. Because okay. sales, marketing, and finance were being done by the medical company. No. And there were really about 80, I think there were 80, what, 80, four, 80, 85, 80, employees. 85 employees, in essentially in Willard, Ohio, and then there were four of us here. Now, what did you think when he said, I want to buy a balloon company? Um, I was very thankful, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we were unemployed. <laughs> I was thinking about that time. Let's it's see, a I guess, <laughs> uh huh. Maybe I better be looking for a job, uh, this type of thing, other than, than really going out and looking for an acquisition. Uh, okay. Type so, so no. I think I think uh, I did not go on the first trip uh, with Ted to to Willard. I did go on all the others, and I think we fell in love with the people there. Okay, tell me about what that was like to start up. Well, I don't want to put it words was in a, your mouth. I don't want no, to tell it you was how a, no. Sure, it was. A, yeah, it was a. Uh, we said it was good news, bad news. Mm -hmm. uh, the good news uh, was that it had been around since 1917, uh, the bad news was it wasn't growing at all. Mm -hmm. And we thought, well, gee, if we could bring a little bit of marketing mm -hmm. expertise to a company that essentially was doing no marketing, that we might be able to build you know, a pretty nice little business. And so uh, that's really what we did. We focused in on saying, all right, we have an outstanding product. We went back to old formulations because we figured we couldn't survive trying to compete against just the cheapest product being made uh, in Mexico and overseas, that we had to go back and, and really uh, uh, produce uh, a product that would have value to it. Just a, a question. Did you have any idea when you started that it would become what pioneers become now? Oh, absolutely. No. We had this vision oh, of this. Oh, you are so <laughs> no. <laughs> no, of course not. You know, uh, if we had the spouse of all these, <laughs> I'd get the real story. Yes, that's, that's the, the real story. Trying to sell that's right, for that's the right. gal, most. No, it sounds like it sounds like we had this big no, vision. No, we had no, really idea. We no, had no idea. No idea. I do yeah. think I do think that one of the things that that helped us is when we when we started, we really didn't say we're balloon manufacturers. We said, what business are we in? And we said, well, we're in you know the social expression business, or we're in the advertising business. And actually, when we first started. We put more emphasis on the custom print side of our business because that <coughs> portion of the business was really had more structure to it. And there were several things that we did probably in retrospect, looking backwards, were pretty unusual at the time. I think I, I recall the story and Ted jump in if I'm if I can give me sure. a second because we're gonna take a little break here. And we'll be back and we'll uh, lift off with Pioneer Balloon and have Betty finish her story in just one month.